question, how do you determine the probabilities that are in your books, your trading manual, and that you speak of daily? For example, the probability of 10 bars, two legs after a wedge, or if the first five days are negative, January is down 60% of the time instead of only 30% of the time. Do you have a software package that helps determine these from historical data? No, but you're bringing up two different things. Okay. Let me deal with the second one first. Um, the, the business about uh, if the first five days of January are negative, January is down 60% of the time instead of only 35% of the time. All traders know that. right? So those calendar things that I talk about, like 4th of July being up and Christmas being up, and then certain months being up, those are things that I've just picked up over the years from what I think are reliable sources. I never make trades based upon them. But it's kind of like if you're in a fraternity or a sorority and you have a secret handshake, kind of like welcome to the club. You're now a trader, and those are some of the secret handshakes that traders have. They know stuff like that. If you have a really big bull trend for two, or three, four days, you expect the market to trade down for a day and a half. There are a whole bunch of little things like that that traders know. It's just fun. To me, it's just fun or stuff like that. Now, the first half of your question, how do you determine the probabilities of things like 10 bars, two legs after a wedge? That is much more subjective. And also, you know, I talk about anytime you're in a channel, anytime you're in a channel and you break to the downside, you have a 30% chance of the breakout being successful, a 70% chance of it reversing within a few bars and going up to the top of the channel. And do I know it's 70%? No. Have I tested it? No. It's just my guideline. I'm drawing a contrast between that and 60%. I say most things are 40 to 60%. Strong breakouts, probabilities can go up to 80% that they'll be followed through. I'm trying to say that when you have a reasonable looking wedge or if you have a reasonable looking channel, especially one contained within parallel lines, uh, the reality is more than 60% of the breakout attempts will fail and the market will reverse. You know, I talked about that on the 60-minute chart over here. I said that this is a bare channel. You can call it a wedge. It doesn't matter what you call it. Okay? But to me, this looks fairly wedgy in an oversold market, right? Uh, and a bear breakout below the bottom of a channel, 70% chance it's going to reverse instead of breaking out to the downside and starting a new leg down. Normally, it reverses within one, two, three, four, five bars. Here, it took about 10 bars before it reversed, but unless the bears get that strong downside breakout, I'm going to assume the breakout will fail. Then you also hear me talk about microchannels. If you start to get 10 bars in a row, like on the 60-minute chart, and a microchannel, like here, the first breakout will be sold, but the second one will be bought, right? So I have statistical stuff just from my own experience, and then here, once you start to get whatever it was, 11 bars without a pullback, 60-minute chart, you know, the odds are high that the first reversal down will be bought, but that you'll soon enter a trading range. On my monthly blog, I keep talking about this monthly chart. We have 33 months without touching the moving average. It's only happened twice before in the past 50 years. How do I know that? I put up the cash chart and scrolled back and counted how many times the market has been 31 bars away from the moving average, and it only happened twice before. Both times the market continued away from the moving average for more bars. One time, I think, 36 bars. The other time, 44 bars. However, both times resulted in corrections. One time, I think, 20 or 22 percent, and the other time, 37 percent. So is this going to be different? Can we say above the moving average 50 bars, 60 bars, 70 bars? Anything can happen. but chances are no. And when we start to get down to the moving average, will we have a 5% correction? Well, the past two times we were this overbought, we had a 20% and a 37% correction. So do I think it's more likely a 5% pullback, or do I think it's more likely a 20% pullback? I think it's more likely a 20% pullback. So some of it is how many months away from the moving average for the monthly chart. Other things, they're just stuff that I've picked up over the years that I've heard uh, people on television say that I've trusted. They've tested it. Some of it I've tested myself to determine that it was factual. And you can do testing with TradeStation and other software products as well. 
and then some of it is purely subjective. Pick a number. 80% of breakouts fail, and 80% of trend reversals fail. And that is subjective because what is a breakout? What is a trend reversal? And that is all subjective. But in general, the point that I'm trying to make is if you're in a trading range, you should not be buying highs. You should not be selling lows because chances are you'll lose money.